Well, hello again. Pastor Ray Barnett here with you. Glad that you could be here with me on another broadcast of God's Answers for Anxiety and Depression. As always, I wish you a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening, depending on what time you're watching this broadcast. Well, once again, today, I'm here in this park, which is pretty much across the street from where I live. As you know, or at least many of you know, I live in the foothills of the Adirondacks, and there's just God's nature, God's beauty everywhere in every direction. I, uh, I'm glad I live here. Listen, I want to get right to it today. Someone has proposed a question, because on the last couple of broadcasts, I have been sharing with you that we need to connect the symptoms of anxiety and depression, also the, obviously the mindset that accompanies these symptoms, to larger pictures, meaning the world we live in. First of all, as a preacher, let me just tell you that I have no doubt in my mind very few people do that we are living in the days prior to the return of Christ, also known as the last days. I really have very little doubt. And the discriminating individual, I mean, there are not too many people that I talk to that don't recognize there's something radically wrong going on in the world. The exceptions to that would be those who say, okay, well, there's things wrong, but we need to keep a positive attitude, which um, no, I'm not against that. I mean, that seems like a good idea. However, when it comes to the scriptures, when it comes to the Bible, there is no ambiguity about this, especially in the New Testament. Well, let me say it this way. In the Old Testament, the prophets from the book of Genesis on are talking about a Savior, one, a Messiah, just one. And with that in mind, we come into the New Testament and the declaration is that Jesus of Nazareth is that Messiah, is that Savior. That said, it leaves us with the statements that we have in the New Testament that there is no other way to heaven. Now, what I like to tell people, if you have a, an issue with that statement or you have a problem with that statement, please keep in mind that I, I didn't write the Bible. It's not my book. It doesn't have my name on it. I discovered it just like everybody else discovers it. However, 44 years of experience of living with the Lord and in the Lord, I can tell you I have no doubt, none whatsoever, that the Bible is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Now, as we connect the symptoms of anxiety and depression to a larger picture, the times we live in, you know, we've gone through in times past, for example, you know, your environment, your immediate environment, your marriage, your home, your job. Okay, so that's, a, that's putting you as an individual into a, a bit of a larger context. What I've been doing is taking you and putting into a, a massive context of the world that we live in. And I've shared with you that I firmly believe that in order to relieve the symptoms of anxiety, we have to manage the things that we can and then we have to manage our thinking and our uh, attitude, perception, and response to all the things going on around us. There's no doubt in anybody's mind that reading the news is stressful. I mean, for the average person it is. Certainly for you who have symptoms of anxiety and depression, it can be exceptionally uh, stressful. And that leads me to this. Having already spoken 
about trying to connect your personal anxieties and depressions and mental health issues to the larger picture. The question has come up about this uh, issue of vaccinations. The question was posed in this respect, that it seemed as though we're always so divided. First thing you have to understand, in my lifetime, right, I'm a so-called baby boomer, born right after the Second World War. This country has been divided for a long, long time, all of my lifetime, politically and otherwise. Yet, if you go back to, well, 18, middle of the 1800s, 19th century, we had a civil war. So obviously the world, obviously the country has been divided for a long time. It's nothing new. And that's the first thing that you should entertain is that what we're seeing in America is not something new. What is new is the technology, the population, and we could add a few other things. But as far as being divided, we have been divided for a long, long time. So it's not something new. Don't, in other words, don't get anxious about it because it's just not something new. Secondly, on the subject of the vaccination, it certainly can cause a lot of distress, obviously confusion, as well as animosity and, um, well, division, like the question was posed in that regard. A division about what to do and what's being done and who to believe. So let me review something with you. I shared with you my opinion, that's what it is. I'm cautious about what I hear, not just from one side, let's say the left, and what they present. I'm cautious, equally cautious, of what I hear coming from the right. I'm talking about political left, political right. I like to think for myself, and I do suggest that you do the same thing. In other words, <laughs> I don't trust anybody. <laughs> I, I know that people take advantage of my buddy Jimmy over there going for a walk. Uh, I don't take anybody's word without doing the research myself and looking at things. So with that being said, I want to share with you my thoughts on to be vaccinated or not to be vaccinated. That is the question. Those of you familiar with Shakespeare's Hamlet, probably one of the most famous lines in all of Western literature, to be or not to be, that is the question. First of all, I have shared with you several times that when you need a medical opinion, you need to see a medical doctor. Now I'm a doctor, but I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a PhD and a THD, doctor of philosophy and also a doctor of theology. But you have to have trust in your medical professional, your primary care physician, cardiologist, pulmonologist, whoever it is you see, whatever doctors you see, you have to have confidence in them that they're giving you good information. For instance, in my case, I have been advised that I should get the vaccination. On two occasions with two of my, my doctors, I have told them, I said, I'm not against getting vaccinated. However, I want to make an intelligent decision. So I follow this news on the vaccination, the reports coming from one group saying, yeah, it's fine, it's just safe. Reports coming from another group that are pointing out some of the very problematic things with some of these uh, vaccines. Let me tell you how I think, and I think, I, I hope that it will help you to think clearly. When President Trump stated back in November of 2020 that he was going to put this thing into what was the word he used? Sort of like hyperspace. I said to myself, now wait a second. You have a, a vac you have a, uh, 
this COVID uh, issue that no one seems to clearly understand just ex precisely what's going on. And if medical science has not been able to cure the common cold, let alone cancer, uh, or even cure heart disease and other things, then logic and reason would dictate that you can't put a cure for something, like a vaccine, on um, into a hyperspeed, a warp speed. That's the, that's the term you use, warp speed. So right away, I'm, I'm a bit suspicious because, let me say it again, if medical science has not been able to cure the common cold in 6,000 years, and uh, we all know from experience, sad experience, they're not able to cure many diseases. How do you just put a vaccine on warp speed and say, we're good? It is my opinion, and that is all it is, it's my opinion, that many people get vaccinated because it gives them a placebo effect. In other words, you know, and see, you see t-shirts like this and you see people talk like this, hey, I'm vaccinated, I'm good. Now how in the world, unless you're truly an epidemiologist, and even then that's still research being done, an epidemiologist, physiologist, uh, even a biologist, or you're in the medical profession, how do you know that the vaccine is safe? How do you know that the vaccine actually works? Well, the truth of it is, they don't. That's just the truth. Now, again, you have to act on the advisement of your medical profession, your primary care physician, your doctors. And if you don't trust your doctor, get another one that you do trust. This is very important, logical, but very important. Now, two of my doctors discussed the vaccine. I usually, I prompted the question. In my case, with my history, it's advisable to get it. And I told both of them that I'm going to wait. I want to wait to see how this turns out. I want to wait till the information is conclusive. And I want to make, in the end, an intelligent and an informed decision. For me, I don't need a placebo effect. Say, hey, I'm good. Because I'm a preacher. And I trust God. I truly do trust God. I'm not saying I won't get vaccinated. And I'm not saying that I will. For me right now, it's a wait and see because I want to repeat this. Nobody, and especially the President of the United States, can make a declaration that you're going to put something on warp speed and there it is. That's just, that's just unintelligent. I want you to know that I supported President Trump. I'm not trying to bash him. But that doesn't make him infallible. It's like, you know, when President Bush, who claimed to be born again, I can't say he is, I can't say he isn't, but he claimed to be born again, made a few statements about religion and all paths leading to heaven and so on. You know, that's just not his domain. That's my domain. Now, you could disagree with the Bible and disagree with what I say. That's your, your option. That's your choice. But my domain is not to run the country. I'm not the president. And George Bush's domain is not theology. That's mine. And others like me. So when you, when you have a president then talking about medicine, even though he's advised by doctors and scientists, it doesn't mean it's correct. All right, so to be vaccinated or to not be vaccinated, best advice is work with your doctor talk to him or her about this decision. But one thing I can say, many of us are suspicious of how this is being handled. For, for example, Eric Clapton is now refusing to do any concerts where um, the insistence is on if you're unvaccinated, you're not coming to the concert. So Clapton has said, well, I'm not doing the concert. I point this out because as far as I know, Eric Clapton doesn't claim to be a, a biblicist or a Christian. But that doesn't mean that people don't have some basic intelligence. But the way this is being handled, or statements that are being made, raises a red flag. It raises a red flag. For example, I'm reading in the news just two days ago, three days ago, the White House is debating 
whether to put out a mandate that if you've, now listen to this, okay? If you've been vaccinated, then we want you to wear a mask, all right, because this COVID is supposed to be up on the, on the uh, uprise again. I want you to wear a mask. And if you're unvac unvaccinated, then just make sure you, you stay away from people. Now, <laughs> I'm not that young. And I was always under the impression that a vaccine was meant to protect me. So if you're vaccinated, but you still have to wear a mask, are you protecting yourself or you're protecting me? And the other way around is, then why, why get the vaccine if you still got to go around wearing a mask? In other words, now we're being told, this is part of the confusion, now we're being told that even if you had the vaccine, you could still get COVID. <laughs> well, all right. Okay. You know, something just doesn't make sense. Something just doesn't make sense here. So Eric Clapton is saying, look, if you're going to start telling people just because you're not vaccinated, you can't come into my concert. I won't do the concert. Me? So good for him. Good for him. Because we're, we're on dangerous ground here in the United States of America. I can't speak for every other country, but in the United States of America, our whole concept is liberty. And even though I've been vaccinated since I was a baby, you're in the military, you get vaccinated, there is no choice, just... Okay? And you live with that. You just have to deal with that. But for those of us that are free men and free women, we have a choice. And we don't want to be marginalized. We don't want to have to go around to be identified as the Jews, Jews were in Germany with the pogrom, you know, the yellow star of David, identifying, identifying them as a Jew. Or other, other countries and other situations where the minority was marginalized and shoved aside. So, I do believe there's a couple of things here to consider. Number one, the decision to be vaccinated or not vaccinated is yours, not the government's. Here's a friend of mine, or a family I was gonna say. Here's a friend of mine whose family is all vaccinated, he's not. And they're all insisting, you, you got to get vaccinated to protect us. Now, again, I'm not a young man. I have never lived and ever heard somebody say, hey, you need to get the vaccine so I'm protected. Am I wrong? Hey, you know, leave me a comment. Am I, am I wrong? I, I was under the impression that to get vaccinated meant I'm protected. Now, this one friend of mine is being pressured by his family to get vaccinated to protect them. Well, this is precisely to the point. We don't want to get all amped up with anger and frustration and all of this because that's going to make your symptoms worse. It's going to make you more depressed and it's going to make you more um, anxious. Informed decision. Look, at, if you get the vaccine, don't listen to some of these prophecy teachers my next doctoral degree will be in eschatology and one of the things I have in one of the chapters that I'm writing now is that Bible prophecy concerning the future is not an exact science all you have to do is look at the prophecies of some of these experts and their teachings and they were wrong period that Christ will come yes and that you know there will be a conclusion and things written in the book of the Revelation Matthew 24 25 and other other areas of scripture yes but it's not an exact science so don't let somebody tell you that if you get vaccinated that you're taking the mark of the beast that, that's a ridiculous statement I want to go on I am already on record saying I do think it's a dress rehearsal for it but this is not the mark of the beast and don't get fooled by dr. so-and-so expert in whatever epidemiology who happens to be born again and the Lord told her what I'm trying to do for you is this. <laughs> With your symptoms of anxiety and depression, you're already confused. Don't let others confuse you. Make a decision based on, uh, based on rather your best idea of what is good to do, proper to do, 
the right to do. And when you do it, whether you are vaccinated or you are not vaccinated, be at peace. Just be at peace. Well, as, um, what was the character in Tom Hanks' movie? I've got his name now. And that's all I've got to say about that. Do give me help there and write his name down in the comments because I forgot his name, forgot the character's name. My, my job is to preach the gospel. And my job on this channel is to do whatever I can to relieve you of your symptoms of anxiety and depression. And in case you missed the point of this teaching, my, my opinion, more opinion than a teaching, do what you think is best to do. And once you do it, you get it, you don't get it. Once you do it, move on. Keep going forward. Like the Marines say, faithful and forward. Just keep going forward. And don't let it distress you. There's going to be plenty in the future that's going to be distressing. Every day I get up to things that are distressing. I just take a deep breath. Keep in mind what I've got to do for today. And by the way, this is part of it. Keep moving forward. I don't have time to... As they used to say, I don't have time to do depression. Too much important business to conduct. Don't you do it either. Don't let people confuse you. Do what you think is best to do. And don't be anxious, guilt-ridden, or depressed about what you have done and what you thought was best. Let me pray for you. Father, once again, I pray for my friends, asking you to relieve them from their anxieties and their depressions, their mental health um, problems, and I ask you to heal them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, so to be vaccinated or not to be vaccinated, that is the question. But you answer it for yourself and live with it in peace. Give me the thumbs up, would you please? Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to the channel. And make sure you hit the notification button so that you know when I've uploaded the video. Usually it's going to be around the same time. Um, every day, much as possible. All right, God willing, I uh, will see you again tomorrow here on God's Answers for uh, Anxiety and Depression. And I'm glad that you were with me. And I really, truly hope that what I'm doing for you, as little as it may seem in these installments, is helping. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow.